Hello and welcome to Azure Lane Meta. If after this video you want to help support the channel, please check out my affiliate store at kit.co slash Azure Lane Meta. Welcome back guys. Over the weekend, I was so focused on running the Azure Lane World Championship that I almost missed this little tidbit of information. This morning, Yostar officially announced that Operation Siren is coming. In one of the announcement tweets, they announced that some of the skills of already existing ships are going to be changing. Some of them are buffs, some of them are nerfs. Today we have the leaks about what ships are going to be changed and how they are going to be changed. Once again, all of this is from the beta server, which means when they actually implement it, it could be tweaked a little bit. So just keep that in mind. But I suspect that most, if not all of these, are going to be the final versions. But once again, they could change before they bring them officially into the game. Perfect example in the past was Birmingham, where they did change her right at the last minute. There are a lot of changes on this list, so to keep this video short, I'm going to try and speed through these pretty quickly. First up on this list is Hirumeta. She's a new ship, so I don't really count this, and we'll skip on that because she's not an existing ship, so this is not really a buff or a nerf. Javelin Kai is going to get 10% extra efficiency, and her EX Barrage buff is going to be increasing from 5 seconds to 8 seconds. So now when she procs her skill, you're going to have 3 extra seconds of a 30% Torp stat boost. So this makes Javelin just a straight better torpedo booster. Javelin's already a pretty good ship. She's the worst of the starters. She still is after this boost, in my opinion but she uh, gets a little bit better here. Next up is the Takao class, which includes Takao and her sister Atago. They gain 10% evasion rate after launching their all-out attack barrages. That is an evasion rate boost, which is very good. One of the things that Takao class really lacks is survivability. They're very kind of weak ships in terms of being able to survive and tank things, boosting that evasion rate is going to be extremely helpful. It's not clear how long these rate boosts last or if they stack, but uh, if they do stack and they last until the end of the battle, this is actually very good. Unfortunately, heavy cruiser guns are still slow, so it's going to not be like something that you could just proc very quickly like some of the destroyers, but this is a very good buff for them and would result in you having to actually change up their gear so that you can probably want to proc this because you want to use a gun that fires faster in order to proc this. Next up, we have South Dakota, which the shield time intervals are changed and instead of being every 30 seconds, they are now 15 seconds from the start of the battle and every 25 seconds afterward. And then it also buffs the firepower by 10% when it does proc, and this can stack up to three times, so 30% max. This is pretty good all around. This really brings South Dakota back from her former glory of being a meta ship. Being every 30 seconds in her procking meant she was pretty much irrelevant in the meta because her skill would not proc before she had the potential to die. Being at 15 seconds now puts her right in the intervals for a lot of barrage guns and that every 25 seconds is a little bit better for queuing up those airstrikes for when she procs. The extra firepower buff just kind of moves in with the, the power creep as well, so very solid change. I like it. Prince of Wales has a new buff, and this is a new buff that I think is amazing. I actually have been hearing about it all over my Discord server. That's actually how I found out about this little leak here is because everyone was talking about the Prince of Wales buff. And so basically, before she buffed herself 5% for every Eagle Union member for firepower, anti-air, reload, and evasion, and now she buffs 10%. So that's impressive. Now it is capped at 30% and before she could get 5% for each one which means that it was capped at 25% with five members. Now so that's only really a 5% boost but it does allow you to only have to run three other Eagle Union members instead of five others. That's kind of nice and it is a 5% boost so that's just straight buff but here's the part I think is more important though. Having three or more Eagle Union members or USS ships means that 
her first volley will come out 50% faster. So she now has an early barrage like King George V and things like that, which is fantastic for bringing them up to relevance. Once again, she's actually with her stats, she's got good base stats on her. It was her skills that were the problem. And this skill is a great buff. And then it also increases the aviation and anti-air by 15% of your back line. This is not locked to HMS, which is good because she's going to be in fleets with all of these USS ships. So she can actually buff the aviation of those USS carriers. And then she also buffs the firepower and the anti-air by 15% for the vanguard. This is less important, but this is very, very good. She's now pretty much the main buffer for the USS faction. Poor USS faction when your main buffer isn't even from your own faction. Very interestingly enough, though, she does not have to be in the flagship spot, which is kind of interesting. So you could actually use like her Bunker Hill in the flagship slot and something like Georgia now, and then maybe like a Baltimore in the vanguard. And uh, that actually seems like it would be a pretty interesting answer and powerful composition now. So uh, Prince of Wales, no longer the dud of the family. Ajax, Achilles, and Exter all during their retrofit got the giant hunter skill. That skill increases damage to heavy cruisers by 25%. This skill in general is being buffed. It increases the speed of the ship by 15% and it increases the damage to medium armor enemies by 25%. So now it can hit medium armor light cruisers as well as medium armor backliners such as like uh, carriers and certain older battle cruisers and things like that. So that's just a straight buff there. If four consecutive shots hit the same enemy, then that enemy is slowed by 30% for five seconds. So it has a slowing ability now, it increases their speed, and now its targeting ability is not just locked to heavy cruisers, but instead to all medium armor. So that's just pretty good. It's just a straight buff. I mean, it doesn't really make them good, but it's much better than what they were. This is like a classic retrofit where they are significantly better than they were before, but it's still not going to make them meta. Shokaku is next, and her crane's protection, which is the one that allows her to get power over time, now applies at the moment of airstrike, which means that the airstrike that procs this skill is actually going to be affected by the skill. It's actually a really significant buff, but it's actually ironically what most people in interpreted how the skill already worked. This is really just changing the skill to work kind of like how it reads. So ships like Shokaku and Centaur, when they have their buffs that apply on the airstrike launch, it doesn't apply to that actual airstrike. The airstrike launches and then the buff applies for the next airstrike. It's one of the reasons why the ship is considered extremely slow. Now, even with the buff, it's not too significant in the game modes that we currently have because we clear things so quickly, but something like Operation Siren when the battles are expected to last a little longer, this stack could become significant over time and be better. It's definitely a buff for Shokaku and great for her fans. Zukako's Crane's Endeavor also gets buffed, but in a very different way than Shokaku. Her skill actually still only applies to the next airstrike, although the updated wording makes that more clear. However, now if she's sorted with three or more IJN ships, she gets a 20% airstrike damage buff. Obviously, she is going to be a ship and Shokaku is going to be a ship. So really just adding Nagato means that she gets 20% damage buff from herself, 20% damage buff from Nagato, 20% air power buff from being sorted with Shokaku. And then she also gives herself subsequent 20% damages stacking for every airstrike that she gives. She's actually going to be pretty good powerhouse. We'll have to see a little bit more details about how the hidden carrier mechanic is going to work to see if this will be relevant. I still don't think she's going to be on the level of Hiru or Shinano, but this means that the Crane Sisters are now pretty good damage dealing powerhouses and the Fox Sisters are going to be more of a fast airstrike composition. One thing I want to talk about before I continue further is we have a report about the levels of Operation Siren. The main story campaign is going to be between level 60 and level 95. The operation area is going to be between level 60 and level 115. And the current boss target, which I assume is Hiru, is at level 128. This is uh, all pretty easily farmable content for commanders that have at least level 60, and you should have about 12 ships that have over level 100, preferably over level 110, in order to clear most 
of this content. So for new commanders, it shouldn't take you too long to get to the mid-tier commanders where you can actually start to clear some Operation Siren content. So I wouldn't worry about this being too difficult of a reach. Now I would potentially worry about how much grind we have to do for plus 13 equipments, but I don't think being able to clear the map will be that difficult for mid-tier players who have only been playing a few months. All right, back to the ships. Victorious, a ship that I'm pretty sure that I ripped on in one of my recent videos for being terrible. She increases damage to battleships by 20%. She already did that. She decreased damage from arcing shells, which is basically battleships and battle cruisers, are reduced by 20%. I think that also applies to Azuma, but I'm not sure on that. But what has changed about her skill is that allied carrier damage to battleships is also buffed by 10%. So she buffs herself 20% as before, and now she buffs her friend carriers by 10%. This still doesn't make her good. Massachusetts comes in, and this is our first nerf. Her arcing shots skill is a very complex skill, but in short, if the shells travel further, they do more damage, and that has always been capped at 30%. Now, when you read this skill, it doesn't come off particularly as a nerf right away, but let's read into it. Right now, it's already increasing up to 30%. However, under the new skill, it will only increase up to 15% unless you equip a specific US secondary gun an auxiliary gun on her. And that means that she goes, then she goes back to 30%, which she already was at currently in the game. Now, the secondary guns of US battleships right now can only equip destroyer guns, which means that she is going to be equipping either the single 138 millimeter, which is also known as the baguette gun, or the twin 127 millimeter, which is pretty standard. Most people don't have six baguette guns, so those typically get priority on the Vanguard ships, and so she typically has the twin 127 millimeter anyway, and it helps with that AA, especially if you are in the PVE mode of the game. However, we are getting new destroyer guns that are pretty powerful in Operation Siren, and most of them are not USS faction related. So even though right now you would currently equip the twin 127 on her in most situations, potentially equipping the baguette gun, in the future we will get destroyer guns that are going to be not USS faction and better to equip to her. So she will be locked into using the 127 millimeter. This is kind of not very good being locked into a specific gun that's likely going to be power creeped in the future. So yeah, why why they did this? I don't know. Massachusetts wasn't even that good. Like unless they are expecting to release some really busted USS ship coming like very soon that makes Massachusetts just unfair. I don't see why we needed to do this, to be honest. She wasn't even being used very often. I leveled mine for a meme, but otherwise, I don't, I don't know. Okay, next we have Taiho. One of the three airstrikes barrages is now guaranteed, and the other subsequent two rolls have a 25% chance of rolling. Taiho, the original form, was always a very RNG based ship and the fact that one of them is guaranteed now will help her be more consistent in her damage. We got Taiho Mu, which was a more consistent version of Taiho, and I think the skill just kind of makes her more consistent. She's still a little bit RNG related. I still don't see any reason to use her over Shinano and yeah, she's like just kind of okay. Next up we have Reno and she actually got a lot of boosts. Nothing super interesting, just straight stat boosts. She gets plus 5% main gun efficiency, plus 5% torpedo efficiency. And then her carrier skill, the one that makes her kind of like serious but wasn't very good, gets buffed just stats across the board. If there's a carrier in the fleet, her crit rate increases to 35% now instead of 15%. It increases damage to destroyers and light cruisers for each carrier in the fleet by 10% now instead of 6% before, so a max of 30% instead of a max of 18%. And if there is a carrier in the same fleet as Reno, Reno will decrease the damage that all the carriers in the fleet and herself take by 10%. This used to only apply for the first two battles of a sortie, now it applies for the first four battles, so it makes her a little bit better for that mob fleet. And uh, Reno just got a straight buff here. There was no reason to really use Reno before this buff. She was an AA boat that was so niche that she was kind of outclassed by other ships. Like Akashi and Isuzu were better. Cheshire and San Diego had similar levels of AA, but actually had surface DPS. So this just kind of makes this really niche ship a little bit better. Not a super like flashy skill update, just 
took all the stats and raised them a little bit. And now we move on to the ship that I think got the biggest buff of the day. Prince of Wales got a really cool buff, but I think Graf Zeppelin got the best buff of the day, and here's why. First of all, she increased her reload stat and her aviation stat. Her aviation stat went from 400 to 423. This is a pretty good buff. And then her reload stat went from 115 to 127. You know, not huge changes, but it does bring her back into the middle of the pack tier wise for using her. Very importantly, the third slot can now be equipped with torpedo bombers. Graf Zeppelin right now can only equip a fighter and two dive bombers. Now she'll be able to equip a fighter, a dive bomber, and the third slot will be an option similar to how Shinano works, where you can pick and you'll have to choice between a torpedo bomber and a dive bomber. Torpedo bombers have a lot of utility to use, and so having this utility is greatly effective. This also is hilarious because the KMS is going to be getting a fantastic, absolutely amazing torpedo bomber come in Operation Siren, and everyone is laughing because the KMS carrier, the only one that we have, I guess Zeppi, but really it's just younger her, but Graf Zeppelin was literally could not equip the best torpedo bomber, which was a KMS plane. With this new buff, she will be able to equip it, and that will be absolutely amazing with that great new torpedo bomber KMS faction equipped. And that leads me into the next section that she changes. Currently, when she equips a BF-109T, an ME-155A, or a JU-87C, which are all German aircraft, she will receive a 30% efficiency on that slot. Her efficiencies are 120, 130, 130, and those will go up to 150, 160, and 160 once they are equipped with the German bombers. Those efficiencies are insanely high compared to the rest of the meta ships. However, the German aircraft suck. Now, the new skill that she has means that equipping one KMS aircraft in any aircraft slot will increase all of your aircraft slots by 30%. This means you could equip something like a useless fighter slot with a Messerschmitt, and then you could have your Helldiver and your Barracuda with 160% efficiencies. This is amazing, and this only gets better when the KMS faction gets a amazing torpedo bomber that will trigger this skill and will allow you to use something like the Sea Hornet and the Hell Diver with 150 and 160 efficiencies respectively. This is an extremely powerful buff for Graf Zeppelin and while I don't think she's going to solely out DPS ships like Shinano or Saratoga, she does have a lot of utility in her faction. By decreasing the damage received to all Iron Blood ships by 15%, that's really effective, and Bismarck gives her a 20% boost in damage, just like Nagato does with Shinano. So in that case, she can actually out damage most other carriers alone when she's paired with Bismarck. So now a Bismarck, Graf Zeppelin, and a FDG backline is going to be significantly better, and that's very exciting for all of those KMS stands. Moving on, these are all skills that change only for Operation Siren, so the ship will work perfectly normal and no changes when using them in the current game modes. It only is changing for Operation Siren. Most of these are pretty minor. They just have to do with how the mechanics work a little bit differently in Operation Operation Siren, but there are a few nerfs of what I'd say in this faction. U-Boat 522 now has increased oxygen, and when you use her in the Operation Siren, she reduces the oil consumption by 6%. This is kind of good because her previous skill allowed her to have the submarine range be the whole map for one battle, and in Operation Siren, submarines are kind of tied to your actual fleets because of how big the maps are, and so her skill kind of of just didn't make sense and so they kind of just gave her a different skill for Operation Siren. Casablanca is the second ship on the list that we have nerfed instead of buffing all carriers in fleets that she is not in by 8% for their aviation and reload. It's now going to be 4% so it's cut in half this is for, once again, Operation Siren only. This is probably because instead of having two fleets, we now have four fleets. So having her be able to buff all three other fleets is kind of powerful. You really don't need four fleets in most cases in Operation Siren from what I've observed. And so you would literally just have 
Casablanca be in a kind of throwaway fleet, it would appear, while you got huge buffs in the other fleets. Probably still use her, but this buff kind of sucks because Casablanca is a really cool rare ship that actually has utility, but that's how they thought. U47 gets a buff as well when she's alone, and now when she's in Operation Siren, it reduces mobility costs by 12%, so that's once again working with the changes to the submarines. Alabama gets a big nerf here. I mean, to be fair, the way her skill is worded, it was very abusable, but she gets the same buff that she gets from killing nodes, but now it's capped at five. This is important because Operation Siren just gives you so many nodes, so she would just be able to be stupid busted. This nerf is kind of needed. The being uncapped part was just kind of silly and really not a problem right now because you weren't going to be doing that much node killing in the current game, but in Operation Siren, this, this needed to be changed. And now her kills in battle are now set to being stacked only seven times. This is, another, once again, another nerf. Having your ability to not be stacked is one of the things that made Alabama a really cool ship. And now in Operation Siren, this resets to whenever you reform your fleet because, once again, the operation mechanics aren't kind of like you enter one kind of sortie. It's kind of a little bit different. So this was needed. Once again, Alabama is not getting nerfed in her OG form for the rest of the game. She's just being nerfed in Operation Siren with caps because otherwise she'd have infinite potential and it would have been kind of a problem. So I, I, I do see why they had to do this for this game mode only. And I appreciate the effect that they didn't nerf the ship game-wide only for this one specific game mode. Latoria has very minor ch word changings that just make her work in the Operation Siren. Nothing really changes. Not a buff, not a nerf. This next one was only mentioned to be Soviet Skaya, but we don't know if it's going to be Rosia or if it's going to be Soyuz. I really hope that it's Soyuz, but I'm pretty sure that the skill is referring to Warkai of Unity. If it is, this is a nerf because now she doesn't get buffed by the Dragon Empire ships and she doesn't get her firepower boost, she only gets her accuracy boost. It still only applies to the first two battles, and so this is a straight nerf if it's from the Warkai skill. If it is a Warkai skill working with Soviet Skaya Soyuz, who is not yet released yet, but rumored to be part of an event coming soon, then this skill is not really, this is not a ship that we know of yet, so I can't really say if it's a nerf, but I do think it is going to be Soviet Sky Russia because this is directly talking about a skill that's Warkai of Unity, and if this is the case, she's getting nerfed. Why she's getting nerfed, I can't say. Maybe because we are getting a Russian event, and we she needed a little bit of not having the Chinese buffs. I'm not quite sure. This seems kind of arbitrary, but I don't have perfect knowledge, so we'll have to wait and see why they did this and if there was a good reason or if this was just an arbitrary nerf. Intrepid's not changed really at all, just reworded to work with Operation Siren. Like all the cross fleet buffers, Tosa gets nerfed instead of having her barrage that fires in the other fleet proc on the third, fourth, and fifth battle. It will now only proc on the third and fourth battle. This seems to be the trend is that cross fleet buffers for Operation Siren were a little bit too strong for their liking. And yep, so they nerfed them. Once again, Tosa works perfectly as normal in the rest of the game content. These nerfs are only for Operation Siren. Continuing on, Shinano has the actual same clause where in the third, fourth, and fifth battles of the allied fleets, she procs a barrage in them. And once again, that seems a little too busted for Azure Lane developers. So they decided to only make it the third and fourth battles instead of the third, fourth, and fifth battles. And Casablanca, Tosa, and Shinano's cross fleet buffers were all nerfed. So the last one, Perseus, obviously is going to get nerfed. She got probably nerfed the hardest. And instead of having her all fleet heal being 3%, it's now going to be 1.5%. Kind of like Casablanca, it got cut in half because it's going to be buffing three fleets instead of one fleet like it does in the main campaign where you can only have two fleets. Yeah, that's really sad for me because I saw Perseus over the summer and I was like, oh, this ship is good. And I knew Operation Cyber was coming from May from the closed beta server. And I was just like, I need to level up my Perseus. This ship is going to be 
stupid busted in Operation Siren. And well, it's not going to be as stupid busted. I still think she's going to be a really good ship in Operation Siren, but a little salty that we went from being a 3% heal to a 1.5% heal. I understand why they did it. It's fine. I just think it's funny because I put so much effort into going deeper into that gotcha to make sure I got her for Operation Siren and also leveled her immediately. Didn't take me only a couple weeks before I got her to level 120 in preparation for Operation Siren. Kashino really has no change. She's just reworded to work better for Operation Siren and she's still not that useful. Kumano is just reworded once again, so not really any big major changes. It's kind of weird to me that they had to reword all these ones from the like very recent event. It's not like they didn't know Operation Siren was coming and that they would have to rework them. So the fact that like Kashino and Kumano and Shinano and Perseus even, like the fact those skills have to be reworked is kind of weird given that they knew this was happening, but that's just kind of the way it is. We have we have two ships left. Tashkent Mew is just reworded once again to work with Operation Siren. Not a significant change. And Gascon is listed, but we don't see any change in the actual text, so maybe it has something to do with how they deal with their barrages or something like that. Not exactly sure on that, but she was listed in having a change here, but none of the skills actually were changed from their wording at all. So that's all of the buffs and the nerfs. Most of the nerfs were limited to Operation Siren only, which I think is good. I think Massachusetts was the only one that's getting nerfed game-wide. All the other nerfs apply to Operation Siren only. Most of them are related to mechanics that would be kind of busted. Perseus, Casablanca, Alabama, those ships would have been extremely powerful if left unchecked in Operation Siren. And so they got they got the nerf, but they still work as nerfs normal in the regular game. Massachusetts is the only one that got nerfed on the whole game wide and just kind of locks her into using a US destroyer gun. Not a huge nerf, honestly. It just kind of makes her flexibility worse, which is kind of strange given that she was not a very used ship in the meta. We got two extremely powerful buffs in Graf Zeppelin and Prince of Wales, turning them from mid-tier, low-tier even ships to mid to high tier ships. So those two ships, people who are fans of Prince of Wales and Graf Zeppelin, this is a very very good news for you. We also see Reno, Shokaku, and Zukaku got good buffs too, as well as the Takao class and South Dakota. Those, I think, were not as powerful buffs as Prince of Wales and Graf Zeppelin, but certainly were very significant increases in their power and helped bring them to the power creep level that were before. My overall opinion on buffs and nerfs are not formulated into a distinct pro or con. I think it's a very big gray area. I know that if you nerf ships that I have invested invested in getting after I get them, it makes me not want to play a game because I've invested into them and I expected them to be at a certain level when I invested into them. And so nerfing ships that like have already been in the game I think is a really bad thing. I've quit games in the past because of doing that. And so I'm not a huge fan of that. Buffing ships that already exist with something like a retrofit or some of these buffs is definitely more acceptable. It encourages collection because your random ships that were not very good now could become good later, which I guess for their pro bottom line, that's actually good because this sets a precedent that you should keep all your ships because they could become good in the future. Not the best thing that I would have liked, but I, I certainly understand it and I get it. So overall, I think I'm not really that disappointed with these buffs. Once again, and I hope they don't make a habit of retweaking skills because that would really turn off players coming back to the game and um, would really turn off players <laughs> that invest a lot into ships that they like and retire ships that they don't. So I'd be careful about this. I think what they've listed here is fine in my personal opinion, but I would be very careful. This is some, uh, some dangerous water when you're starting to buff and nerf ships that have already been released. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some information out of it. And if you want to support the channel, you can subscribe. And if you want to add a little bit more, I do have a donation link in the description. There's no obligation. It certainly just helps for some projects like some of the bigger projects I've done recently. Thank you guys. Take care.